How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. The trade deadline started off with a blistering 4-team, 12-player deal Tuesday night. The most players involved in nearly 20 years, Robert Covington and Clint Capella, were the big names. Between Atlanta, Houston, Minnesota, and Denver, Andre Iguodala finally got moved to Miami. Let's take a look at the winners and losers of the trade deadline. Starting with the winners, the Memphis Grizzlies. Not only did the franchise get rid of Andre Iguodala, who refused to play for them, but able to land 23-year-old Justice Winslow, a past their prime Deion Waiters and James Johnson. For Dre, Salomon Hill, and Jay Crowder, no picks were involved. Nobody expected the young Memphis team to play this well, currently in the 8th spot. With all the pressure, many teams begging Memphis to buy Iguodala out. The Grizz got a lot of assets in return. Although Waiters and Johnson are somewhat diminished, it's not a high risk situation getting those two. Justice Winslow still has a lot of upside. Another winner, the Miami Heat. Pat Riley strikes again. The achy two-year $30 million deals a head scratcher, and Winslow was banged up by injuries this season wasn't really helping the team much. Being paid 13 mil each of the next two seasons, getting rid of both Waiters and Johnson, a blessing. While Iggy and Jimmy Butler's defensive presence in the postseason should make a huge impact, combined with having Jay Crowder, a crafty veteran, alongside sharpshooters off the bench, Miami will be a dangerous team come playoff time. Winners, the Golden State Warriors, getting Andrew Wiggins in the D'Angelo Russell trade, a guy who needed to start fresh, now all the pressure won't be on him, was getting paid similar money to D'Lo anyway, will be part of a good culture, an organization, with a bunch of veteran champions, anything short of working hard will be unacceptable. At least Harrison Barnes started in the 2015 title team, even though Wiggins' jumper is not as good, he has more talent and will have to work in all areas of his game, playing the 2 and 3, he won't need to average over 20 points a game and take as many shots, but just be willing to do the little things. Golden State should be back next season. Receiving a 2021 first and 2021 second rounder will be a huge asset for the team going forward. Winners, D'Angelo Russell and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Wasting a season with Golden State with Steph and Clay banged up, the Dubs simply don't need him. Now that he's with Minnesota, teaming up alongside his good friend Cat, also receiving Amari Spellman, Jacob Evans, the first and second pick of the 2015 draft will now run the team, and Carl Towns will feel a lot better about himself. Even though he hasn't won a game since November 27, before Thanksgiving, unacceptable at all levels. His IG post said it all yesterday, but now he will be happier. They also got Malik Beasley. Juanjo Herman Gomez, Jared Vanderbilt, the expiring of Evan Turner, and the Nets 2020 first round pick. Huge winners, the Los Angeles Clippers, getting Marcus Morris, a 19 point a game score for the New York Knicks. For Mo Heartless, their offense just got better and the bench just got deeper. On a three team deal with New York and Washington, Isaiah Thomas is also now a Clipper. Jerome Robinson wasn't doing much anyway. Now with Washington and Mo Heartless in a 2020 first to the Knicks. Another winner, the Dallas Mavericks, getting Will. Cauley Stein from Golden State for a 2020 second rounder, which was the Jazz pick after Dwight Powell's Achilles injury. Dallas's pick and roll with the center was a huge part of their offense, and at least Cauley Stein can cover up some ground for now. Even with Lucas's injuries, the team should still be safe in securing a playoff spot. Another winner, the Utah Jazz. Thankfully getting rid of Dante Exum December 24th, the first trade of the season, Exum was wasting his career away off the bench. While Jordan Clarkson's been a terrific fit, putting up numbers even though they had to give up two second rounders, Utah's in position to contend now and a 15 plus point score comes a long way when the star players have an off game in the postseason. Winners the Atlanta Hawks, finally getting a solid center in Clint Capella and a massive 14 12 player deal, Olten and Nate will be released as well as getting rid of Alex Lynn who will be a free agent next season anyway wasn't producing much and Jabari Parker who's been injury prone yet again hasn't lived up to his expectations and potential lacks defense anyway getting back big man Dwayne Detman hilarious but at least the Clint Trey pick and roll will be amusing to watch a much better fit for the Hawks going forward than Andre Drummond winners Robert Covington who was stuck on a terrible dysfunctional Wolves team now he'll be competing in the postseason as a crucial 3 and D wing coming from the coldest city to being in warm weather his number Numbers of almost 13 in game 6 rebounds, plus his advanced stats, much needed from Mr. Analytics Daryl Morey. Covington simply plays winning basketball and doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. Another winner, the Philadelphia 76ers, getting 6-6-2 guard Alex Burks, a 16 point score on a terrible team this season, averages around 10 for his career, and Glenn Robinson the third, having the best season of his career, averaging 13 points a game, shooting 40% from 3, the two can stretch the floor off the bench, for 3 second rounders, a 
solid attempt for the team to add more shooters as the two stars in MB and Simmons still needs to figure out their spacing. Hard to imagine the Sixers getting any worse. On to the losers, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kevin Love still stuck in misery. His team's one of the worst in the NBA and his value given his fat contract will keep diminishing. At 31 years old, Love would be a third option at best for a contender. With his team 13 and 39 overall, it will continue to be very difficult for the Cavs to treat a diminishing player. They won't get much in return and the team will continue to stink. Another loser, the Sacramento Kings, being forced to attach two second rounders just to get rid of the angry dead men, a complete waste. Getting Alex Lynn won't help the team much, he'll be a free agent next summer anyway. I won't be surprised if the Kings pay him tons of money. And getting Jabari Parker won't help either. Sacramento also got rid of Trevor Ariza for the underachieving Ken Bazemore. It just doesn't seem like the franchise has a clue what they're doing. While Jabari Parker's career has been an absolute nightmare, being on five different teams now for the last two and a half seasons, teams are literally playing hot potato with the 24 year old. On pace to play for all 30 teams if they continue to ship him out like this for the next 15 seasons. Another loser, Derek Rose of the Detroit Pistons, still stuck with the terrible team, wasting away another productive season, averaging 18 and a half points, 6 assists on 50% shooting in 26 minutes, that's over 25 points a game per 36. A type of guy who can still get buckets on a good team, be effective off the bench, one of the most underpaid productive values, he'll be 32 next season and a year older. Losers, the Los Angeles Lakers, losing the Marcus Morris sweepstakes to the Clippers, not treating Kyle Kuzma, many disappointed fans will continue to be angry and blame all the losses on Kuz, while the Clippers appear to be the better team. Another loser, PJ Tucker, trending heavily on Twitter, his IG post said it all, with Houston going extremely small, Tucker will have no choice but to play the 5, being only 6'5", going up against guys like Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, Rudy Gobert and Nikola Jokic, and an absolute nightmare he will fear and will take a lot of punishment down low. The 34 year old will take heavy loads of getting worked in the pain unless Bruno Cableco gets tons of minutes and takes the heavy load off Tucker. Too early to tell includes the Houston Rockets small ball lineup. Not knowing if it's gonna work long term, it doesn't look like it will. Being extremely weak at the 5, contenders in the west will just punish them down low. While they can outrun and outscore teams, more will be determined. And the New York Knicks hiring Leon Rose as team president, a former agent he'll have the heavy load on his shoulder in helping the franchise get out of misery. While other teams like OKC and Indiana remain the same, thank you so much for watching this video. I love all of you. See you next time.